Thank you, uh, CSD President uh, Professor Mujkun Dube, CSD Vice President and my friend Mohanti, of course, Mujkun is also my friend, CSD Director Nityanandji, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great privilege to give the Durga Bai Desh Mukha lecture. Uh, uh, the director has already talked about the capabilities of the Deshmukh, Chittamani and Burgabai. They were great institution builders and I'm honored to give this lecture. I must at the beginning also express my uh, sorrow at the passing away of my friend and comrade in many events, the late Tajamul Haq, his untimely death has been a big blow and we are indeed very sorry for that. Now I have a text which runs into 14 uh, closely typed pages and I just don't, I'm just not given the kind of time to cover that. So I will speak in a telegraphic style. I will make uh, 15 points in two minutes each. And those of you who are interested in detail, I'm sure the CST secretariat will be able to give you my written text. And you can correspond on it in terms of detail with me at my email ID, yalag at gmail.com. Uh, I think the choice that we are facing is, shall we uh, force the pace of agricultural reform or shall we phase it? Uh, in a sense, we are at a policy crossroad. My impression is that it's much better to consult, uh, particularly since the Reform Act was, as you know, passed on a single day. And uh, this is a continental country. And one size fits all is really not something which you can try and force through. But uh, there are some people in government who are try to force through the pace. And I think that normally leads to a reaction which in fact delays us more. Another reason why we shouldn't force the pace this year is that the reform under the Act is basically trade-oriented. Now, trade and transport are two sides of the same coin, as the great uh, Gottfried Hammerle showed to us, or any good book, like uh, uh, any good book on international trade tells us. And if you have a COVID pandemic and transport is strictly uh, uh, monitored and is closed down at short notice. I'm not blaming uh, the local authorities. The collector, if he has to save lives, will always save the train, stop the train. But uh, uh, it's, it's better for us to face the reform acts partly because uh, the transport arteries are closed down because the need to save lives is far more than trade. Uh, the other argument, of course, is that, uh, obviously there's a lot of conflict which is going on, is that uh, the Northwest, uh, agriculture everywhere should be specializing and diversifying. But the Northwest concentrates only on grain. So that's a very silly argument. When you say that you are planning for a diversified agriculture, you mean diversification given the uh, given the soil, the land, the climate of every area. And the Northwest, Punjab, Haryana, and West Mupi, good alluvial soil, uh, plenty of irrigation. Groundwater, well, they're facing some problems, but not like in Gujarat or Maharashtra, where we uh, sort of temple bells start ringing if we find water at 
300 feet. Even today, in uh, Punjab, Haryana, and Western UP, you say that you are going deep down if you have to go down to 100 feet. So in that kind of a agriculture, we should let them um, go for uh, the highest yielding weeds at the highest yielding paddy. Uh, yes, there are parts of uh, Punjab, particularly the southern region, and parts of Haryana which are not covered by the Indra Gandhi Canal, where you could uh, have oil seeds and pulses. But the basic strategy of uh, grain in this area, which is creating a lot of problems, is, uh, is I think, wise. And to argue for diversification and to say that one is against that is uh, not kosher as far as I'm concerned. It's in a way saying that areas like Gujarat and Maharashtra should not concentrate on oil seeds and pulses and diversify into grain. That will be equally silly. The other argument that is being made is that we must push through private trade and RCS. And the argument is given that Arthiyas are important in uh, Northwestern India, in Punjab, in Haryana, in Western UP. So we must push them through everywhere. Now, it has to be appreciated that the Arthiya in the Northwest, in Punjab, Haryana, and Western UP, is basically only an agent of the FCI. He procures the grain for the FCI. And Dr. Manmohan Singh at one stage brought him in because he felt that that way the handling charges of the Arthiyas would be less. But they are not like the Arthiyas in Rajasthan, or in Madhya Pradesh, or in Gujarat and Maharashtra, where there is a real conflict between the Jat or the Patel farmer of the Arthiya traders. And uh, so I think. Uh, uh, it, it, it is wrong to argue that Arthiyas are involved in private trade in the Northwest. It is correct that they do get into. So Arthiyas do get into. Uh, private trade in uh, in uh, in a way such that the conflict between the Lala and the Jat is there in uh, in the rest of the country. Now, but in the rest of the country, the MSP is not as important as it is in the Northwest. In fact, the MSP in a place like Gujarat or in Maharashtra or even in parts of Madhya Pradesh is like a, a a concept that economists have of ghost money. Ghost money was something which was uh, developed by an Italian economist called Carlo Cipolla. And Cipolla argued that even when a certain unit of certain money becomes not the unit of exchange, but it can remain in people's minds as the unit of account. It's like uh, we still talk about Anna's and uh, although there are really no annals who work with Rupiah and Neapasa, and once upon a time there used to be Cordis, and Cordis are... So in a way, MSP, outside, MSP is important in the Northwest of the And outside the Northwest, in fact, it is not important. And it's important to recognize that and uh, to think of... Uh, uh, strengthening the markets, a kind of reform which is there in the act that was passed in Parliament. Uh, last year, agriculture was good. In a year which, to use an expression which Queen Elizabeth had used, was an anus horrible. This year I'm not sure because already there's been a rainfall failure, but uh, I've not covered that because we get to know that only now. Uh, but uh, 
I think to push the FRBM to argue that we shouldn't support agriculture, I agree with the chairman of the finance commission that this is not quite the time to be pressing the FRBM, and we should support agriculture the way we have uh, uh, pointed it out, and the FRBM can wait. Um, uh, MSP, you know, once upon a time there used to be an MSP for each crop done separately. And I said, no, there's no point in doing that because MSP has to be a part of a system of relative prices. So in 1982, when I was chairman of APC, I started the first report where price relatives became the object of policy rather than supporting each crop separately. And in fact, the Secretary of Agriculture was a very senior ideas officer and the fraud became Chief Secretary uh, in West Bengal, uh, said, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we want uh, every report to be separate. So I told him that uh, fact, there is a, for each crop a separate chapter, but uh, you have to look at the whole question of price relative, which is the first chapter of the, in those days it was called APC, now CATP report. So he insisted that uh, he would not like this and he would want that. And I had to sort of tell him, <coughs> My commission is an autonomous commission, and the government has no right to insist. And uh, I think to his dismay, he found that out. So he had to go on with that. But uh, uh, the point more is that the MSP works does work in the northwest. For the rest of the country, it is more a kind of flag post which the farmer uses, because he says, I want a price better than this. And, uh, you know, they are very civilized about this. They uh, came into Maharashtra last year, searched all the way from Nashi, and then they were told that the kids are going to school on that day in Bombay. So they said, we'll wait outside. So this is happening all over the country. Lalji Desai did it in Gujarat. He brought out a thousand tractors and Sanat Mehta and me went with him. Uh, and we let them negotiate with the government. Uh, now, this has become a kind of uh, practice that uh, when the farmer feels he is mistreated, they bring out the tractors and they force the government to listen to them. And I think it would be government would be well advised to give them a hearing rather than forcing them out into the into the situation where they are in conflict with the authorities. I think it is true that uh, the Essentials Commodity Act should be done, and the legislation provides for that. Unfortunately. So this are our foreign service with them, but the IAS fellows, they still don't go along that way. And uh, when need be, they bring in the Essentials Commodity Act again. We have seen that happen during the last two weeks. I think once this is an act, it should most certainly not uh, be allowed. Uh, and as soon as the milk train starts going from Nashik to Bombay and from Asana to Navsari, in any case, uh, the, uh, it's a trade-dominated agriculture and not an essentials commodity denominated agriculture uh, that we should pursue. Does trade help everybody? In theory, yes. I mean, my teacher was a big Travis. But if you have imperfect markets, 
Then I think the concept that unilateral trade liberalization is advocated is something I would agree with Mr. Kumar. Is not that something that we should support. Multilateral trade, yes, but then multilateral trade needs to be negotiated. Unilateral trade uh, liberalization. There are some of my economist friends are very great supporters of that. I tend to be a little skeptical of that, and I don't think there's anything in sheer theory which says that. Uh, Uh, trade will help if the multilateral institutions are uh, not functioning. The unilateral trade will help. There was another argument that has been raised, which I have dealt with in my Durga Bai Deshmukh lecture, which is the whole concept of cost. Now, uh, I did a report in which I had argued that rental on land. Should be allowed for the fixation of MSPs, and uh, some very outstanding economists working in the government made the very valid argument from Ricardo, uh, Rajiv Kumar, Victor Roy, that rental on land is a Ricardian rent, and therefore it is unearned, so it should not be allowed. Now my argument there is that they are absolutely right. Rental on land is a Ricardian concept. It is an unearned income, but the point is that you allow people to have unearned income on anything else. You allow them to have state grants on mining leases that you give. You allow them to make scarcity grants on imports, for which you facilitate for them. So, if you are doing that for the corporate sector, your argument for not giving the rental to uh, the farmer. It's not very valid, and I think the Swaminathan Commission uh, tended to agree with me. Not tended to, in fact, did agree with that argument. That I gave. So I don't think that argument should be there. Now, my next argument, of course, is on the whole question of the WTO and the special and differential treatment argument. I mean, I don't want to spend too much of time on that. In a lecture which is presided over by Mr. Uh, Dubey, who is a bit of a legend in that area, but uh, the uh, the easier argument, the dirty tariffication argument, I think these are all very valid arguments for which to practice, and uh, the Indian argument. That the livelihood uh, argument should be allowed to us. Uh, special differential treatment should be there for that. As much to be said for it. We argued it all through, and the G77, with support from people like Mr. Dubey, backed us up. Or Murasali Maran, in fact, died defending that argument. And Suresh Prabhu followed it through up till Argentina, the Argentina. But then all of a sudden, the government of India gave it up, and they have now said that the other issues can also be discussed. Now, this, in my mind, is not very strong here. This has most certainly led to a lot of. Uh, arguments against it. There are many countries in the third world which feel let down with this, and uh, I think uh, the uh, the uh, uh, us giving up on this, we have given up a leadership role on both uh, the special and differentiated. And I think Malas, my teacher Malas, argued on dirty tariffication, the Asia problem. These are all well known. I've dealt with them in my lecture. I will not uh, get into detail. I think this argument that if you are giving consumer price support, 
and uh, you are subsidizing uh, and that there is a trade off between the two this is a false argument uh you remember ashok gulati together with the, i mean in fact when ashok was doing his phd i was in the bscp so he came and met me and we helped him in working out uh, uh discriminatory uh, tariff policy outcomes and discrimination and he made the argument that we are taxing the culture uh and so the world bank said yes uh, they tax agriculture and the support industry but later on they wanted us to uh uh they said that uh, we should we should not support agriculture with the wto so gulati also changed his argument I decided that the discrimination in, in, against agriculture is not what it was. This is in a not very well known piece, but it is uh, printed by Gulati and Malak and other, and it really shows how trade arguments can be used for the the need that is there of the time being, rather than any permanent student. uh there has been an argument that india should not do stock holding in grains uh because in purchasing power parity terms you are doing very well i find that very strange uh i was told when i went to the world bank in the mid 70s in the seminar that the purchasing power parity line really comes from the planning commission's parity line the dollar a day well that might have been true at that stage but then you know the way they do the, the price increases and so on uh uh by joking we said in a seminar in the 80s in washington that according to your latest uh dollar denominated purchasing power parity line i am poor although i am a very uh, highly paid professor in my whole life in my whole life and i think the question really is that you should be looking at the relative prices which are important in agricultural trade and not the price of david uh harvest motorcycles going into building up your purchasing power parity for subsidizing public stock holding and consumers i had a somewhat long straight argument but with muskun dubey there i would stay out of it uh the argument that we don't have credible agriculture is correct i think agro climatic planning is basically which we started in the later part of the 70s the early part of the 80s is basically an argument for trade which says that not every region should grow grains every region and every country should grow what they can specialize in and for the rest they should trade but that doesn't mean that we will take the trading regime if it is unfair as given we can be both in favor of trade and argue for multilateral trade reform and i don't think this is at all inconsistent with each other as some people bring it out to be the fiscal argument is there that how much can you support but it's at the margin and the more important thing is that this is the way you will go on the lines of sustainability now that's very important uh because uh um uh, still is looking at me that i'm exceeding my time but uh uh you know in this pandemic year um there's a 
Harvard economist of Romanian origin, his name is Nicolas Georgescu Rojnak. He's one of my favorite economists. And he's built up something called the law of entropy. And the law of entropy basically says that if you have a fixed quantity of resources and you overconsume them, then the situation will explode. It's, it's, it's something like what in the Hindu mythology we call pralaya, that is, the world will come to an end. Uh, so we have to be careful when we use resources. Sustainability is not just an argument for agriculture and farmers. It's an argument to avoid pandemics also. And pandemics are more important than what we think they are. In the beginning of the century, the Secretary General of the United Nations had asked some of us to write a paper each on, on what we think are the big threats of the century. And I won't talk about my paper, but one of my colleagues was Anna Marie Slaughter, who was the Dean of the Woodrow Wilson School in Princeton. And she argued that uh, nuclear war will probably not be possible in the 21st century because game theory tells us that everybody will know that if they want to destroy the other man, they'll get destroyed themselves. But she said that the dangers will come from viruses. And uh, given the mindset that we all have, she said that the viruses will originate from Africa. Well, this time it originated from the bats in Wuhan. But uh, the important issue is that uh, uh, agriculture should be sustainable, should be sustained. And that means that everything we talked about, I did it very briefly in this talk, in a little more detail, in the text that I have already submitted, to CSD, that these issues are of some importance. I would recommend that we should take up the issues crop by crop, uh, maybe crop sets, where relative prices are important, and look at what are the policies which are required in the next phase, and spell them out in some detail. Have consultations on them as Ramesh Chand has argued in the implementation of the Farm Trade Act and then adjust as you go along. So I would not recommend pushing through the farmers' bills without consultation, without a roadmap. I would recommend uh, spelling out a framework, making it a base for discussion. Going out into the field and having discussions with farmers groups, with bankers and others, and then implementing it as you go along. It can be a very rewarding exercise. I've done it twice in my life. One was the poverty line. I didn't just develop a poverty line. An economist called T.L. Tata has just written a book from the Oxford Press. And he tells me, he says that he wanted to join the planning commission, so he was asked to see me. And I grilled him for three hours. It's a nonsense because I don't grill anybody. But I must have discussed with him. And then I told him that you have the skills now. Let's build a new poverty line. But after we developed a poverty line, I went all over the country. And I discussed it with trade unions, with farmers groups, with chambers of farmers, with newspaper editors, so that there was a degree of understanding, not necessarily agreement, which is very important in a competent. Now that is what we need again. Uh, we I did that again in agroclimatic practices. And groups all over India went there. Oh, these things give you many great benefits. I get always messages from Sarangi, who was a collector in Nashik, when I said we must get out of sugar cane into onions and grapes. And he said, sir, I will do it. And as Nashik, that area went into wineries, 
He keeps on telling me, sir, I did it. And he later on became chairman of the party. So I think we need to take agriculture, take relative crops, look ahead for the next phase, have discussion and build up policies to uh, implement and so that our agriculture uh, does well. It did well last year. It could have done better. Fortunate for once it back this year. It needs support. I hope that will be forthcoming. So with those words, I will hand myself over to anything that we can do for the rest of the time that we have in this year's Yorkabhaidishnu lecture, for which I thank you, Professor Dubey, for inviting me to give it. I'm sorry I couldn't cover my text, but in the time that I have, I thought I'd only make a few brief points. Thank you. Jai Hind. In the program, we have some questions and discussions for 10 minutes. Uh, Professor Muchkun Dubey, I'm Dr. Jay Prakashnar, and may, may I briefly uh, raise an issue? Uh, thank you, Professor Alad, for your very insightful words. Uh, uh, it occurs to me that there are four corners to what you're saying. One is excessive regulation to the detriment of the farmer is certainly not going to help the agricultural sector. Two, judicious support is required to the farmer because agriculture is always a, a difficult sector world over. But there are two other areas which I think are not discussed today uh, because they're not directly related to agriculture. But unless we look at the rural economy as such and look at building small towns which can attract investment, provide services, create jobs and give opportunity for people to work on the farm and also have the benefit of urban living. I don't see how 1.5 million habitats infrastructure can be improved or economy can be um, grown or jobs can be created. The second is, if you notice, even during my lifetime, I'm much younger than both of you, both Professor Dubey and uh, you, even in my generation, when we were kids in the village, there was not this much of distress, not because there was no poverty, but because education and healthcare, whatever is available, people took it, they didn't spend money. Today, the biggest expenditure, you ask any farmer anywhere in the country, the biggest expenditure is for the kids' education and the health care. Unless these two services of quality are available to everybody in villages, I don't see how agrarian distress can be alleviated. I just thought I would place before you, uh, does it make any sense, Professor uh, uh, Alak? Professor Alak? that's very important. Uh, as you know, we have discussed it in meetings that you have organized. I've written a book on it. It's called The Future of Indian Agriculture. And, uh, uh, you know, first stage processing, uh, transport, uh, these are extremely important issues. And I'm glad that you highlighted them. Uh, there is a bit of that in my uh, Durga Bhai Deshmukh lecture in the text, but not as much as it should be there. And uh, I think it's uh, I mean, in a year of the pandemic, it is so important to recognize that as far as health and education at the lowest level is concerned, particularly of the girl child, the state cannot pass on all its responsibilities to uh, the private sector. In fact, even if they do involve the private sector, it should be on a cooperative basis. And these are very important priorities that we have. Resources, yes, but, you know, a small increase in the tax rate can take care of these priorities. So I'm glad, Jain Prakash, that you made both these very important points. Any other queries? And now I can... I would like to request Professor Monty to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, uh, Professor Dubey. Uh, thank you, Professor Alec, for an excellent and very timely lecture. Uh, you know, that gives us uh, even clearer 
and stronger arguments for all of us who are supporting the farmers movement and why we oppose these three laws. And you said that what was more important was consultation with the best argument or best proposals or, or a draft policy. Uh, I think uh, that was missing and that's why uh, this whole process has led to such a devastating situation and a seven month old, more than seven months old agitation is still going strong in the borders of Delhi. We are very close to that, both uh, physically and, <laughs> and morally politically. Now, um, I think three very important points were made and Professor Dubey has already mentioned them. I think one is that uh, trade liberalization, unilateral trade liberalization as the driving force in any uh, sector of the economy and the economy as a whole uh, uh, is bound to have serious problems because uh, the, the priorities are different. Priorities are not the producers and the consumers. Priorities are profit. Uh, and therefore, uh, I think uh, he, he, he put the focus on this unilateral trade liberalization, which was uh, pushed uh, in the globalization scheme, but has been registered by, by many countries, and particularly G77. Uh, the second thing that was very important, and he is known for this contribution, Professor Alec, uh, uh, the, the whole notion of relative pricing uh, and uh, of crops, of uh, uh, production situations, of uh, uh, situations varying from place to place, uh, and uh, how that is not absolutely uh, kept in view in these three laws uh, and that is why uh, uh, these laws are very very faulty the third point is the diversity point uh, which professor Dubey has highlighted also that you know, this one size doesn't fit all uh, the uh, we have different i mean between gujarat and punjab i come from odisha and there the agricultural and the variety of Agriculture within three, four geoclimatic regions of Odisha uh, are, are different. Uh, therefore, uh, and unless we decentralize, uh, and and I'm glad Jayaprakash Narayan, in his inimitable way, added those points about rural economy and you know uh, creation of jobs through variety of means and health and education being the driving force. Uh, very very important. Therefore, the variety, the diversity of India, which can be only protected by decentralization and multiple stakeholders' rights being respected in a network of political, institutional, and economic arrangements. Uh, I think that is the message that Professor Alan leaves with us, and we shall be so proud to carry this forward. Uh, indeed, we, we remember our dear colleague, and friend Professor Hark uh, very, very, very much. And we miss him on this occasion. We pay our tribute to him. I see many old friends uh, uh, attending this very important uh, meeting. Uh, Barbara Harris fight and right here, uh, Sudanda Sen, <laughs> and many others. And some old colleagues, Rajiv Balakrishnan, uh, who edited the first 20 lectures of uh, the Durga Bay Deshmukh uh, lectures. And we hope that the last several would also be edited by somebody uh, and so many others. Uh, uh, Professor Case Bhatt, our old director from the South Campus and one of the builders of uh, CSD on both uh, campuses. Uh, we are very happy. Uh, and so many colleagues from the South Center and elsewhere. So we are most grateful to Professor Alag for making this occasion really memorable. And we thank IAC for collaborating uh, on this occasion uh, and Professor Dubey with, uh, for his very important remarks. Uh, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. So with this uh, uh, 
uh, we to bring this uh, meeting to an end. Thank you, thank you again. There, keep keep well, keep safe, and keep writing. Real, I really enjoyed your piece on co cooperatives the day before yesterday. Thank you, thank you. Great. So each of you.